This video is sponsored by Trend Micro. Hey, what's going on, people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're talking about the Galaxy S21 FE once again because you guys requested that I do a promo tutorial, and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this camera tips and tricks video. But before we get into that, I gotta give a quick shout out to this video sponsor. I don't know about you, but I practically take care of everything in my life on an electronic device. This includes private stuff like banking, managing investments, and running my businesses. Unfortunately, because we live in such a digital age, there are more hackers than ever before waiting for you to slip up. Trend Micro is a global cybersecurity leader. They offer an all-in-one suite that gives you protection from cyber threats at home and on the go. The premium suite includes features like a VPN and built-in Wi-Fi protection, so you no longer need to be afraid when logging onto public networks. Additionally, it features anti-phishing and malicious URL blocking. Other features include Cleaner One Pro, which keeps your computer running at its best by freeing up storage and memory, improving boot up times, and cleans up your system browser files. It has some of the fastest malware scanning I've ever seen, being able to deep scan my entire system in less than an hour. Lastly, Folder Shield prevents unauthorized programs from making changes to protected files, including USB and cloud drives. There's a lot more the Premium Suite offers. To find out more and to try it out for yourself, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. So the Galaxy S21 FE actually has really good cameras that are very capable, especially if you use Pro Mode or Pro Video Mode. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. One of the biggest benefits to using Pro Mode is Raw Capture. Raw Capture gives you a ton of flexibility when editing your photos, so that way you can push the colors and exposure around. A lot of people think that if you use Pro Mode, you have to manually dial in your settings, but that's not so. You can still take advantage of Auto while using Pro Mode and capturing a raw image. Let me show you. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and launch the camera app, then we're gonna go under Pro Mode, then we're gonna go into our settings, tap on Picture Formats, make sure Raw Copies is toggled on, then go back. And now you have a bunch of settings down here on the bottom. You can see you have ISO and shutter speed. By default, you should see an A next to the value. So it says A40 for me, and then A1 over 1500. As long as you see an A before the value, that means you're using auto. If you want to manually dial it in, just tap on the setting you want to adjust, and then use the wheel, and then dial in the value that you want to dial. However, if you wanna go back to auto, all you have to do is just tap on manual and then take your photo. And I'm capturing a JPEG image and a raw image. So here's a quick example of what a straight out of the camera JPEG image looks like. And then this is what a raw image looks like after it's been edited. You can see there's a lot more color and depth to the image with the raw capture. And that's because you're able to push it a lot more. So that's how you can use Pro Mode in auto, but if you want to take control of your settings, it opens up the door for more creative shots, including long exposure shots for light trails or motion blur. Let me show you. So the way long exposure works is you're going to want to dial down your ISO as low as you can get it, and then increase your shutter speed to seconds. So no longer are we dealing with fractions of seconds. We're going to go to full seconds. The longer the shutter stays open, the more light trails or motion blur you're going to capture. So if you can go all the way to 30 seconds, awesome. It's gonna give you a lot of blur and a lot of um, light trails. So let's go ahead and do a quick example because as you can see, the screen's completely white. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. I'm gonna need a few things, including a tripod, because if you're doing a slow shutter, you don't want any handshake or movement to the camera. Otherwise, that's gonna create unwanted blur. Another thing I'm gonna need because we're in the middle of the day is a little ND filter like this one right here. Both of these things are really cheap. I'll link them down in the description. You can pick them both up for like under 50 bucks. And you're gonna need both of these to capture long exposure during the day. So I'm gonna give you an example of how to capture some light trails. And we had to move to a darker environment, so we're in a parking garage. And what's crazy is despite having an ND filter on the phone, it's still not enough. So we need some stronger ND. So either you can buy a stronger ND filter or use your sunglasses, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture some light trails for you. So I have my settings dialed in. I have my ISO set to 50. I have my shutter speed set to 10 seconds. And then I manually controlled the focus in order to you know, lock the focus where the car is going to be driving past. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my sunglasses over the camera, give a thumbs up to the driver and here we go so I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot now and these are my results 
One problem I've seen a lot of people complain about when it comes to using a Samsung phone is a slow shutter. This means that a lot of the times your image ends up blurry. So if you're trying to take an action shot, your subject is gonna be a little bit blurry. So you can fix this one of two ways. First way is just to stay in auto and use burst shot. All you have to do is touch on the shutter button and then swipe down and it will automatically start firing off shots. And then you have to go through all of those images and select the one that's in focus and you can fix it that way. Or you could use pro mode and then dial in your settings manually. Let me show you how to do that. So as you can see, the image is just white right now and that's because we're still using the same settings that we use for our slow shutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse those by swiping over to the right and then tapping on the circle arrow, which is gonna reset everything to its default state. Now I'm gonna come up on the ISO to about 300, 320. And then on the shutter speed, I'm going to leave it at one over 24,000 because that's going to snap action or motion really well. It's gonna remove any blur that might occur. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand off the phone and I'm gonna do my leaping gazelle shot. Here we go. Are we ready? So that's how you can freeze frame or freeze action shots in order to make sure your subject stays nice and sharp and also how you can create slow shutter shots to caption motion blur or light trails. Now let's talk about the fourth thing, which is about adjusting the color of your image before you take the shot using white balance and some other tools. So if you want to adjust the color and look of your image before you take the shot, you could do this two different ways. Number one is to adjust your white balance, probably the easiest, most straightforward way of adjusting color. You're gonna go over to the right hand side of the settings down here on the bottom, tap on WB. By default, it's set to auto, but all you have to do is just move the wheel around. And from here, you can adjust the temperature of your image. The higher the Kelvin, the warmer the image, the lower the Kelvin, the cooler the image. So if you're trying to get artistic and you want something to be more on the cool side, just dial it down a notch. If you want it to be more warmer, then just dial it up a notch. And then of course you can go back to auto if you choose to do so. Uh, you can also lock your white balance. So right now by default or on auto, it's saying that it's 4,900 Kelvin and all I have to do is just toggle it to manual and now the white balance will not change. You can also adjust the look of your image by tapping on the little circle in the top right corner. And then from here, you can make your image a little bit less contrasty or more contrasty. You can also adjust the highlights so you can dial it back to lower the brightness or dial it up if you want to overexpose the highlights and then push them to create like a more blown out look like so. You could do the same thing to shadows. You can dial them down to crush them or push them up to, actually it's in reverse. Pushing them up crushes them and then dialing them down will actually lift them. So you can adjust the saturation, make your image more saturated or desaturate it for a more flatter look. And then last but not least, we have tone. So you can add green to the image or magenta. And this works in conjunction with white balance really well. So you can always just use your tint and then your white balance sliders in order to adjust the color and then use these other four settings to adjust the exposure and overall look of the image. So if you can make it flatter, make it more punchy, things like that. So you can do this right before you take the shot and then take your shot and that look will be baked in. But of course, if you have brawl enabled, you can do all this in post. The last thing I wanna show you is the fact that you can use the ultra wide camera in pro mode and dial in all your settings, which is really cool. But if we switch back to the wide and then press and hold on the W, you can pull up different zooms. So you have two, four, and 10. These are digital crops on the sensor, so the quality isn't going to be the best. You can also use the wheel to zoom out and then zoom in and get all the in-between numbers. Like I said, this is a digital crop, so the quality isn't going to look terrific, but you are still capturing a raw image, so you can bring this into Photoshop, work some magic and clean up the image a little bit. So this is gonna work in a pinch. It's just nice that you do have the option to digitally zoom even in pro mode. So now that we've talked about pro photo mode, let's go ahead and jump into pro video mode. So jumping into pro video mode, one of the best reasons to use pro video is for the additional frame rates. So if I tap on the frame rate up here at the top, you can see we have 4K 60, 4K 30, 4K 24, full HD 120, full HD 60, full HD 30, 
full HD 24, and then HD 30. Now in comparison, if we go under video mode and then tap on the frame rates at the top, you can see we're limited to 4K 60, 30, full HD 60, full HD 30, and then HD 30. So you get quite a few additional frame rates just by using pro video mode. One easy way to make your smartphone videos look a little bit more cinematic or filmic is black bars, right? Because black bars on the top and bottom of an image usually represent a cinematic movie. And you could do that in pro video mode by shooting in the cinematic aspect ratio. Let me show you. If you want to take advantage of that cinema aspect ratio, tap on where it says 16 by nine and then select 21 by nine. And that's gonna give you those black bars on the top and bottom and really stretch out the image like you see in professional movies such as, I don't know. I couldn't come up with a good example. If, if you wanna take advantage of that cinematic aspect ratio, just tap on where it says 16 by nine and then select 21 by nine and that's gonna add the black bars on the top and bottom and really stretch out the image to give you that cinematic look. Here's an example of a 16 by nine video and then here's one in 21 by nine. Let me know which one you prefer. Another benefit to using pro mode is that you're able to double your shutter speed in order to match your frames per second. So if you're shooting in say 24 frames per second, you can adjust your shutter speed to be one over 1 50th. This will give you smooth motion. So here's an example of you know, a cranked shutter speed. So it's really high. You can see all the jitters and judders. And then this is a more natural looking image with the shutter speed being doubled to match that of frames per second. Of course, you might get a blown out image like you see here, and that's where something like this ND is going to come in clutch, so that way you can control the exposure using the variable ND in order to maintain that double shutter speed to match the frames per second. Just like in pro photo mode, you have full manual control of your focus in pro video. And this allows you to do something really cool called rack focus or focus pulls. So if you switch over to manual focus and then use this wheel right here to focus, you can find the point of your focus. So this is 0.8 and then rack to a different point such as 1.0 and then bounce back to 0.8. And this allows you to get really creative with your focus shots. So if you're trying to do a focus pull to your subject, you can do that while recording video as you can see here by this example. One of the really cool things about pro video mode is that it allows you to control your microphone input. So you can pick from various sources in order to capture audio. Let me show you how to do it. If you look over on the far right side where your settings are on the bottom here, you can see an option for mic. If you tap on that, you can choose between Omni, which is using the Omni directional mics located on the phone itself. USB, if you plug in a USB mic, Bluetooth, if you happen to have a pair of like Galaxy Buds or other earbuds that have microphones built in, or you could do a Bluetooth mix. So it's gonna use your Bluetooth audio as well as the omnidirectional audio, which is really cool. And then you can adjust the level of the microphone right here. So you can have a lower level if you have a hot mic or a higher level if your mic isn't as sensitive. So I'm gonna give you a quick example using a USB mic. So as you can see, I have a Rode USB-C mic plugged in right here, just plugged into the bottom of the Galaxy S21 FE. Now I'm gonna go into the mic mode and you can see USB automatically turned on and my mic levels are right here in the top left corner so I can monitor my audio. So here's a quick example using the Rode microphone. Now, if you're interested in this entire kit, this is the Rode Vlogger kit for USB-C enabled devices. This is a USB-C shotgun mic and then a Rode tripod and a Rode smartphone clip. Excellent little setup. And this is an example of what you can expect for audio when it comes to this little USB-C mic. So now I'm using the onboard microphones that the S21 FE offers. It doesn't sound bad by any means, but if you want a more directional sound, the Rode Vlogger mic or Rode USB-C mic is a really good mic and it's gonna give you a little bit better audio and more directional audio to block out external noise. Let me know what you guys think. Which one do you prefer? One of the great things about this mic is it comes with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right here on the back. So that way you can monitor the audio or just check out how the audio came out when you finished recording. So there you have it. That was several tips and tricks to help you get the most out of pro mode and pro video mode on the S21 FE. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in a comment below and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.